Well, I'd like to bid a welcome to everyone and welcome to our Harmony Foundation Town Hall, the Community Foundation for Barbershop. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rick Taylor and I'm one of the regional directors here at Harmony Foundation and I'll be your host this evening. Tonight's town hall is being recorded and we plan to share it publicly so that those who couldn't join us tonight will also be able to watch it later at their leisure. The uh, town hall tonight is intended to focus on the future of the foundation, the collaborative relationships that are being strengthened and developed and the exciting programs that donors gifts can support toward our shared goal of enriching lives through singing. Our intention tonight is to keep this evening's uh, uh, festivities to 90 minutes with a time for presentation by our wonderful partners and a bit of time for questions. Uh, if we don't have a chance to answer your specific question this evening, we would welcome the opportunity to contact you directly to address it. Well, let's get started. Right now, I'd like to turn it over to someone we all know. He's a regional director here at Harmony Foundation and the lead singer for our wonderful 2010 International Champion Quartet Stormfront friends, Mr. Jim Clark. Thank you, Rick. Welcome everyone. Fantastic to have you here this evening. We're going to jump right in here uh, to have one of our partners begin to describe to you what's going on in that particular realm. We've got so many wonderful guests here with us this evening. So we're going to hear first from our friends at the Association of International Champions, the AIC. And joining us here this evening is the tenor of the 2005 International Champs Real Time. He is also the marketing vice president for the Association of International Champions. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about the partnership that the AIC has with HFI, as well as what the AIC's future looks like. Please welcome Mr. Tim Brorsma. Howdy. Um, thanks for having me, guys. Um, so, you know, for many years, I wanted a quick hit on right out of the gate why AIC for the first round of initiatives we were rolling out, why we chose HFI. Um, you know, early on years ago, AIC established our endowment with the Harmony Foundation. And the purpose of that endowment was for outreach specifically. Um, so when we kind of started to develop these new plans for some of the targets we wanted to, um, to hit these next few years, the obvious choice was the Harmony Foundation due to the fact of our ongoing history and relationship with them. And they've been a wonderful partner so far. Um, before we launched these, uh, one of the first things we did that wasn't really, you know, there was no planning for was the July 3 show that the AIC did. And I want to just take a second and thank the Harmony Foundation for their uh, efforts in pulling that together. You know, when LA was canceled, it threw all of us for a, uh, it, yeah, it, it shook all of us because that's, this is that thing we do every year. And uh, so we decided we need to put on a live stream because people need barbershop and we were trying to figure out what, how would we do this and who has the money and you know one of the lead the lead from storefront sitting in the room says I might know a fundraising organization and so great team Rick Taylor Sean uh, Jim and Ryan and the, all the great fundraisers uh, worked their tails off and raised the funds for it put on a solid shot solid show it was a absolute success uh, appears to be one of the most attended uh, barbershop uh, concerts ever uh, which is pretty exciting. So from that, we decided let's do another one in the this Christmas. And uh, so December 19, there will be another AIC show. Uh, unlike anything that's been seen in Barbershop, I'm not going to give too much away, but uh, it's a 90-minute heavy-hitting AIC show with some pretty amazing special guests and uh, fully produced. And I'm again, I'm going to leave it at that because it's, uh, it's just Keep an eye on our social, you'll start to see little hints of what's going on. It's gonna be pretty spectacular. But anyway, through these first two events and the planning of the second one, we saw that you know the Harmony Foundation can deliver and we knew they'd be a great partner. So that just solidified for us the decision to partner with them on these outreach programs, which uh, you probably saw today. Uh, they finally got posted and launched, uh, working through some final tweaks on them. Um, so I just wanna talk about those just for a couple minutes here. The, the, the AIC, uh, for, for those of you who don't know, our, our purpose and our, our passion is to bring the best of barbershop to the world and help them see that barbershop 
harmony brings people together and creates a lasting impact on lives. Um, so the three targets that in that vein of that mission and purpose that we targeted were, we've got chapters, underserved schools, or underserved communities, and uh, districts. And the, so the first one I'm gonna quick hit on is our desire to support local chapters with an outreach uh, to support them with their shows. The, this one's really simple. Uh, our hope is to help bring uh, an AIC quartet to a local chapter who could not otherwise afford to have an AIC quartet uh, on their show. Uh, through, the, through a grant process with the Harmony Foundation, we're hoping to be able to grant at least half a dozen to a dozen of these every year, where a chapter can say, hey, we want to have an AIC quartet, can't afford it, we're a small chapter in the middle of nowhere or wherever they are, uh, but they want to bring an AIC quartet and have them and show them, show their community what the best of barbershop can look like. We want to help fund that. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, and I, I would say I would sign up fast for that one because we have choruses asking already and we think this one's gonna go pretty quick and we'll tap our, our uh, funding abilities on this one. Um, the other two targets have to do specifically with outreach um, and showing local communities what barbershop can look like. Um, the first one is underserved communities. Uh, we, we have a lot of music educators in, uh, in the AIC and with all that's been going on in the world these last few years, uh, we just felt it's really important to figure out how to help you know, underserved communities see what barbershop can can do for them in, in how we all know, all of us who sing, we get it. We, we understand that, you know, race, religion, gender, all those things go away when you're standing around in a circle with people singing. Um, barbershop breaks down those walls. And to be able to go into underserved communities where those schools would not otherwise have access to uh, to see what barbershop can be and to bring in a, a couple AIC quartets, a Sweet Adeline Champ quartet or two and, and put on a clinic um, in these local schools and show them uh, what barbershop can be, you know, engage the kids, have them singing with us, uh, engage the music educators. We've got NAFME who's engaged, ACDA is engaged, are wanting to be a part of these, these underserved community outreaches. Um, so we're really excited for that one. Um, the intent in that is that a local music educator can say, I'd like to bring that to my school and we will partner with you. Uh, we will put together the AIC quartets, the Sweet, the Sweet Adeline quartets, and we will come and put on a clinic for your school uh, in partnership with the Harmony Foundation. So that's the second one. And the last one is uh, district and regional outreaches. Much of uh, what used to be, or still is, I guess, uh, the Youth in Harmony type uh, weekends. Um, you know, growing up, I sang in a quartet with my dad and we toured Washington, Idaho, and Oregon with Kirk Young. Kirk was the music educator and we were the quartet. And we went into, I don't know how many schools, but we hit a pile of schools. We would sing a song, Kirk would teach, we would teach a tag. We would all share about how barbershop has impacted our lives. Uh, we'd have the whole choir singing with us at the end, singing barbershop. Uh, and it was, it was a meaningful thing for a lot of those schools. And we got to see youth get engaged from that into the local chapters because the chapter was with us as we put on these events and uh, they got to build a relationship with the music educator and and that continued on so we want to help do exactly that where if a district says we want to put on an AIC uh, outreach event uh, or put on an outreach event in our local community uh, the AIC will send out a couple quartets some Sweet Adeline quartets uh, eventually mixed champ quartets and we will put on a Thursday and a Friday clinic in, in as many schools as we can hit, culminating in a Saturday event where there is a, um, where the kids come, we teach them music. And then uh, that night we put on a show with the local chapters and those quartets. And we also have the kids who were part of that clinic that day also be on the show that night. And then throw a party afterwards, typical afterglow and hang out and sing tags to those kids. That's that is what we want to do and show them what barbershop can be for them. So, so those are the three targets the AIC has decided to roll out and uh, we're excited for them. We've got, again, several, several groups lining up already. And so we encourage you, if you have interest, to fill out the form and you'll be contacted right away by an AIC member who will start talking to you about what that event, uh, what your event, what you want it to look like. And we'll start part, uh, engaging the Harmony Foundation and figuring out how to make it happen. So there you go. Fantastic. Thank you, Tim. And the only thing that I will add in there just for your confirmation is that one of the exciting things about these three categories is that they're not 
exclusive, they can actually cross each other. So it's not one or the other or the other. They can all be intermixed and have a local and a regional and an underserved community element all happening at the same time. And it's only being governed by what we have available to fund it and the creativity with the people who are requesting the grant. And of course, what happens with the pandemic right now, as is well, with everything else going on. And, and to that, Jim, I'll just give a quick, sim simple example. You know, in the Evergreen District in uh, next spring, or sometime early next year, they're, they're going to have a pre preliminary contest or a divisional contest where two divisions are having their thing together. And so they've reached out and said, hey, what if we had a few AIC quartets and some Sweet Adeline quartets come out and we came, they came out early, hit all the schools in the Seattle region, targeting specifically underserved schools, and put on a clinic, invited everyone to the show of champions on the weekend, where the AIC quartets will be and the Sweet Adeline quartets will be you know, headlined the divisional contest. Um, and we've already got one, dis one district signed up for that kind of an event, uh, which will be really exciting. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. We have a lot more to get through. So we will pass this back over to our host with the most there, Mr. Rick Taylor. Thanks, Jim and Tim. I'd like to bring on this next young man. He's a, he's a pal of mine. Uh, he's a wonderful guitar player. He's a husband to Quincy, and uh, he's a right fair baritone singer and tag teacher. Uh, he's also a regional director for Harmony Foundation. Please welcome Kyle Snook. Thanks, Rick. You're making me blush. I like when you introduce me. It was nice. Uh, thanks so much. I've had the opportunity to, to dip my toe in the world of Harmony Incorporated over the last couple of years and have visited several of their chapters, mostly in the Midwest, and have even attended one of their uh, international conventions a couple of years ago when it was in Orlando. And we are really fortunate to have three individuals who are connected with Harmony Incorporated tonight. I'd like to introduce Gay Lacasse, Donna McKay, and Kelly Thomas. And if we could start, ladies, um, by just introducing or rather sharing what your connection is with Harmony Incorporated. Sure, I can do that. I'm Donna McKay and I'm the uh, International President for Harmony Incorporated. And Kelly Thomas, Kelly is our VP of Education and that's why she's here. Um, Director's First Program falls under her responsibility. And we also have Gayla Case, who is our Area 6 Director. And Gay, hi. <laughs> so we're all gonna be sharing a little bit of information about Director's First tonight. Awesome. Yeah, well, why don't you jump right into it and share okay. what is Directors First and, and how does Harmony Foundation fit into the picture? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Kyle and Perry and all of Harmony Foundation for inviting us here tonight to talk about the Directors First program. Um, before I talk about the program, just I want to just give you a little bit of background about Harmony Incorporated, uh, in case you're not familiar with us. Um, we are a women's barbershop organization. Uh, we were founded in 1959 as a democratic organization to which all women could belong, and that holds true today. Currently, we have 67 chapters and 2,100 members in the US and Canada. And we are a volunteer run organization. So our mission is empowering all women through education, friendship and singing. And although that the words of that mission have kind of changed over the years, those three key words are still the core of who we are as an organization, education, friendship and singing are really our core. So uh, we created the Directors First program uh, in late 2017 as a way to further our mission to educate our chapter directors and musical leaders. And the goal of the program is to send one director or musical leader from every chapter of Harmony Incorporated to Harmony University over a five year period. So, and, and the reason is that we believe that stronger directors create stronger chapters and obviously then stronger areas of Harmony Inc and ultimately a stronger organization. Um, so in the spring of 2018, we then partnered with Harmony Foundation 
to help us with the fundraising for the Directors First program. And we also partner with uh, Sing Cam Canada Harmony to collect donations uh, for the program in Canada because approximately 40% of our membership is in Canada. So that's kind of an overview of the program. And, and I'm now gonna turn it over to Kelly Peterson, Kelly Thomas, uh, who is our VP of Education, who will share a little more detail about uh, how the program has been going over the past couple of years. Thanks, Donna. Um, yes, as Donna mentioned, our, our goal for this initiative is to send uh, one representative from every chapter to Harmony University over the five years. And we're well on our way to that goal. Um, we, uh, we really wanted to focus on the musical leaders of the organization because we felt that the strength of our organization uh, lied with our musical leadership. And so each of our chapters needed to be strong to keep our organization strong. Um, and that musical leadership varies from chapter to chapter depending on the size of the chapter and who they have at the head. Sometimes, you know, they have robust musical leader right in front of them, but the next tier down of the musical leadership needs some direction. And so, although Directors First is aimed at sending frontline directors, um, any musical leaders in a chapter are eligible to apply for this scholarship. Um, the, as you mentioned, the parameters are that just one musical leader can go from each chapter. Um, and so when they apply for the program, uh, they must have a recommendation letter from their chapter president recommending them as their kind of their chapter representative. Um, <clears throat> and so we've sent a whole wide variety of um, musical leaders, directors, assistant directors, um, section leaders, choreographers, all different presentation people, you know, all different um, uh, musical leaders from the choruses. And um, so in order to apply, they have to be a member in good standing of Harmony Incorporated. Um, they can be male or female and need to fill a musical leadership role in the chapter. And as I said, they need that letter of recommendation from their chapter president. Um, the applicants are then reviewed by a scholarship committee that is formed by myself. And uh, we select a few people to be on the committee. And um, we select the number of chapters that or scholarships that we can afford to send that year based on how much money has been raised through Harmony Foundation and Sing Canada. And uh, we offer the scholarships and anyone who can't commit to going in July, we then go to kind of like an alternate list and we continue to go down that list until all of the scholarships are filled for that year. Um, so far, since uh, 2018, we've raised approximately $17,000 for the program and we've sent 39 um, musical leaders to Harmony University, 27 from the US and 12 from Canada. And so you can see we're well on our way to accomplishing our goal of sending one leader from each chapter. And it really has had um, an amazing impact on the directors that have gone, musical leaders that have gone. We've had many testimonials from those who have experienced it. You know, they've shared such comments as, I came away from this experience with so much new knowledge that I will need months to fully integrate it. Um, attending Harmony University significantly has impacted my abilities as a musical leader. And <clears throat> I uh, and thank you so much for the initiative around Directors First program, which has enabled me to go to Harmony University. After a week filled with learning and inspiration, I cannot wait to meet up with my chorus on Tuesday to start sharing new techniques, cool songs, and many fun ideas so generously shared by the excellent faculty and greater barbershop community. Um, and another one said, the classes are hands-on and practical. I, ha I now have and will continue to become a better director for my chorus through the knowledge and experience gained at Harmony University. So that's just a small sampling of the reviews we've gotten back and, and the impact it's had on our, on our organization. Um, the wonderful thing about this program is that it doesn't just impact the musical leaders who go, but it also impacts our members to a wide degree. You know, it's impacted over 1,400 of our members who are members of these choruses um, whose musical leaders have gone and gained this knowledge and experience and have felt the benefits of that. Um, <clears throat> so this initiative has not only provided the opportunity to strengthen our musical leaders, but it's strengthened our chapters. And as Donna said, in turn has strengthened 
Harmony Incorporated and made us stronger for it. And so it's been a real benefit to our organization. And we look forward to continuing uh, working towards that goal and sending the rest of our musical leaders uh, to Harmony University. Gail, I'll turn the time over to you for a few words. Sure. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm actually a fundraiser um, in real life. Um, in my barbershop life, I'm, I'm very proud to be part of the Harmony Incorporated uh, family and to be serving on the board of directors. Um, one of the things that we recognize as a volunteer, a volunteer organization is that we don't have the capacity to fundraise on our own um, to the extent that we need to, to be able to accomplish the goals that the lofty goals that we had set out for directors first. So partnering with Harmony Foundation uh, really helped us meet this, this really amazing um, uh, goal and opportunity for the organization. And we, we can't be happier um, with the results that we've gotten. Um, we look forward to, you know, what happens in the future. I think that, um, you know, we're really proud that we're a, uh, an all-volunteer organization. We are a growing organization and, and many uh, nonprofits can't say that right now. So we're, we're very proud of that. Um, and I think that uh, for donors who give to, uh, to us through Harmony Foundation, uh, there's an, sort of an economy of scale. You know, when you, you see that, you know, we've raised $17,000 thanks to Harmony Foundation. Um, if $17,000 was given to Harvard University, for example, you know, you probably wouldn't even get a, a thank you note except that, you know, just from the, from the, uh, an email. Um, for us, uh, the gift of, of, you know, $50 or $100 is huge because it's, that's just who we are. And we're growing, we're proud, we're so thankful to have this relationship, which has really uh, shown that our missions are aligned and we could not be happier uh, to have had the opportunity to participate in this. And I'd like to uh, point out to, uh, to Tim that the Association of Harmony Queens is happy to, uh, to be there for the AIC outreach. If you need us, we're there and we'll be more than happy to, uh, to be participants in, in that effort as well. So uh, thank you, Perry. Thank you to all the fundraisers whom I've met through, uh, we all have met through uh, Harmony Foundation. It has been a, a really beneficial uh, partnership and collaboration, and uh, we look forward to more. Thanks so much for having us. Awesome. Thank you all three for those kind words. The, the final thing that I'll add is the chapters that I have visited from Harmony Incorporated, it seemed like more often than not, uh, within five or ten minutes, I could tell if the director had been to Harmony U on scholarship from Directors First, and, and often they would tell me, yeah, I was able to go through, through directors first. And Kelly said it perfectly. The ripple effect is huge. And so I believe if that director's experience is enriched and they're strengthened, then the whole community of singers benefits from that. So thank you for, uh, for walking alongside us and we're excited to continue to grow those ripples. So thank you, ladies. Moving along, we are going to uh, connect with a couple of gentlemen from my original neck of the woods, Cleveland, Ohio. And Jim Johnson, if you wouldn't mind queuing up the video for that, I will let that take it away. Power of Harmony really uh, was born the fact that, that uh, we know that music is transformative. Music is an opportunity to express oneself cre creatively. It's an opportunity for someone to have a voice, if you will, pun intended, um, to share how they feel. We want to help children who are either underserved or not served. Uh, and when I say children, that includes family, um, and as well as animals also. And how we do that is, is three different ways. Uh, we'll support organizations in the community that are already providing services to children so they can continue to pr provide those services. We'll also work to create collaborative arrangements so that we can cover more uh, territory and help more children and families. And if we notice there's either a underserved or not served population, we'll create a program and we'll bring it to the kids to make sure. I mean, Power of Harmony is such a beautiful program because, look, these kids are caught in a cycle. They're, they're either going to just repeat their poor choices or make more poor choices or end up dead. 
and, and we're not okay with that. Th these are children who deserve to understand that they have potential and they can have a life that's just amazing like anybody else in the world. So we need to invest the time and energy in these children to show them there's other ways and other choices to make. We knew the moment we built the concept that this had to be a national program and that we needed a partner that will allow us to take that nationally and have the infrastructure to be able to do that, which is a large reason that we reached out to Harmony Foundation International. They have that network. This program, Power of Harmony, is going to be institutional changing for them. They really want to make this a cornerstone of where they go from here into the future. So that's very exciting. They've been a huge supporter and on board right away. It's a population that is underserved and frankly not served at all. And we have a chance for people to sing in a harmony, in a group that may never have that chance otherwise. We have a feeling that it's gonna reach beyond the ones that are singing with us to the families and to the neighborhoods. Hey, rather than doing this, join me. I'm going to the chorus this week. We have a chance to sing together. Let's have some fun. Let's do something different. Power behind the power of harmony is folks who understand that these young men can contribute to society and, and make a big difference in the ripple effect and the other lives that they can touch and they become productive positive members of society that's the return on investment that folks will get when they support this program and so now you have a young man who was in the system but now he's a positive influence in his community. He's productive in the workforce and helping other folks. And he sees the world in a whole new different way. And that's the return on the investment you get for this program. And so the more we can get folks behind this program and invest in it, the more lives we can change and touch. Awesome. We are so lucky to have the two gentlemen that are featured in that video, Dennis Castiglione and Philip Wink who are both associated with the Wank Family Foundation. And as you can tell in a three minute video, they have more passion uh, than I have perhaps ever had. So I'm gonna let them do most of the talking and unpack what the Power of Harmony program is. Thank you, Kyle. I just realized, it. can you tell we're both Italian? Did you see the <laughs> hands? I mean, constantly. <laughs> I didn't notice this as much until tonight when I watched it. I go, man, look at that. <laughs> Phil, why don't, you, why don't you lead off and tell a bit about your background, because I think it's, it's pretty important uh, considering what we're doing, as, not only as a foundation, but specifically with Power of Harmony. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Val. There we go. I was going to see if people could read lips. Um, before I do that, I want to first thank all of you folks. I mean, it's uh, almost overwhelming for me uh, to be able to be in front of this group of folks and and share what we're up to because we are going to change a whole lot of kids lives so i appreciate the privilege to serve and to share our this program with you folks um and secondly i have to give a shout out because it's my goombie's birthday today it's dennis's birthday so i just have to make sure everybody in the world knows that <laughs> i'll take every year i can get thanks <laughs> you're right right well i make money every year on my birthday because they, oh. they always bet against me anyway um I'm a psychologist. My specialty is trauma. I worked with abused children. And for me, it's always been very personal that we reach out to populations that have a very skewed or limited perspective in the world um, because they deserve better. And I think it's our responsibility to give those opportunities to these young people so they can understand not only the wealth they have inside them, but how they can be productive, happy, healthy, and and share in this world in, in a much more positive way. Uh, the Power of Harmony program from a therapeutic perspective, it has a, a core curriculum that uses music therapy, um, not just as a process for these young people to start to heal, but to find healthier ways to express themselves. I mean, when I get all worked up, I belt out an ACDC song or something like that. So empowering these kids with their voices as, as an instrument for healing and communication and releasing of energy in positive ways just goes volumes. I could, I could bore you to death with the statistics, but it's just it's unbelievable what it can do for a person. Um, and what I really find exciting about the um, power of harmony is, what, well, actually, Kyle said it, the, the ripple effect. You know, 
a lot of people talk about ROIs these days on programs. You know, what's the return on investment? Well, the return on this investment is one young man's life changed, which will change 10 or 20 other lives as he interacts with his siblings, cousins, neighborhood friends, whatever. And he's approaching them with a whole different perspective. And he's starting to show them the options they have in this world. And, and that's just an amazing return to me. Uh, with that, Dennis, I'll flip it back over to you and you can tell them a little more about the specifics of Power of Harmony. Sure, sure. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Uh, Jim, we can go to the slides. Uh, the, the, the pathway to this program began actually nine years ago when I started volunteering at uh, Cuyahoga Hills Juvenile Correctional Facility. And um, I, I see who they are. I see who they were. Um, I recognize that, that while they are all felons in that facility, uh, they are young men that made bad decisions, some of whom would love to take that back. And others, frankly, uh, we may never turn the corner with. But um, the one thing that struck me is that there is no music in that facility. And further research demonstrated that there, there is no formal music education anywhere in the, the youth correctional facility system right now, to the best of our knowledge. So this is a, a wide open opportunity for us. And, and I think there's a, a few things that we had to put in place for this to work uh, the way we want it to work. So there are basically four pillars to Power of Harmony. First is performance. Uh, we think it's important to be able to go in there. They love having people come in. By the way, um, this is a forgotten population. Once they get behind bars, many of these young men don't even have vis visitors. When we show up on a Sunday for a, a, um, a, a ministry, uh, they're, they're amazed that we're, we're giving up our own time to be there with them. So um, when, when we got to talking with them about you know, where, where the needs are, um, performance is pretty key because it's a chance to go in live and perform for them, which uh, I happen to be also the, uh, the president of the Men of Independence as well. And uh, so I basically walked MOI in there uh, because of my relationship and we performed for them. And it was the first time in the history of that facility, they had every young man that was incarcerated there in the same room at the same time. Uh, it was a huge risk on the part of Cuyahoga Hills but it, it, uh, we knocked the ball out of the park. I, I was holding my breath. I thought there might be seven or eight young men sticking around. There were 95 that were there in attendance. And uh, when they told them, hey, you can leave if you want to, anyone that's interested in learning more about singing and learning more about this Power of Harmony program, stick around. And of the 95, we had 44. 44 of the 95 stuck around, which was huge for us. We took them aside and sang tags with them. Um, we we kind of got things rolling with them. So we know performance is a key cornerstone, coming in to perform, not only as local chapters, but I really believe that bringing uh, someone in with regularity every four to six weeks to perform, regardless of the, the genre of music, both vocal and instrumental, that gets music into that building. And it sets a, a cornerstone for us, if you will, for everything else we want to do beyond that. Secondly is, is education, bringing two instructors in once a week, uh, we see it as a 60 to 90 minute program. They won't sing for 90 minutes. Um, knowing those young men, they, they need some time to unwind. Uh, and then we get into business. And you know, those of you that are educators, you know sometimes that's the biggest challenge for you. Um, and then giving some time on the back end for them to just socialize with us and, and get to know us as well. Uh, what we ultimately would love to do is to build, form ensemble, ensembles within each facility and allow them to perform for activities that are within the walls, and then in some cases, even outside the walls. And uh, we, we think there's, there's a great opportunity for that. These young men will, will um, they will fully embrace the opportunity uh, to show off what they've learned. I see it even when we're there for religious ministry on Sunday nights. They love being able to share what they learn reading their Bible that week uh, and want to show us how much they're responding to what we give to them. Um, and the fourth piece of this is probably to me the most important in where I personally have gotten my own personal juice from it. And that's the mem mentorship side of this thing. So uh, beyond the two instructors that would come in and work with them on a weekly basis, we believe it's important for a handful of other uh, men to come in and work with them, spend time with them, help them through music issues. And especially that last uh, 20 or 30 minutes just winding it down and getting to know them. So the plan is not only to have them there when they're going through their music education and guiding them through the participation side, but also when they get out, being that phone call, hey, 
Joe, why don't you plan on coming to course with me today? I'll swing by and pick you up. or We'll send an Uber for you, whatever we can do to get you on the rises with us so that you know you have male support. You have someone that cares about you on the outside beyond that gang maybe that you've been a part of. So we know these are key components in that. Jim, next slide, if you would, please. So who should consider participating? Well, certainly uh, EHS chapters. You know, we've got, uh, we've got lots of people that, that, are, that are all over the country that, that are in key spots. And, and there's a how-to manual that you'll have in your hands that'll help you walk through how you make this happen. But we think EHS chapters, certainly church and community choirs, and even collegiate choruses are organizations that, that should consider participating and can help us spread this nationally as well. Next one, Jim, please. So you will have some resources in place. That video you just saw will be at your disposal to kind of introduce what Power of Harmony is to your chapter, uh, to your, your folks back home, and also uh, to those that uh, at the facilities near you uh, when you introduce this concept to them as well. The how-to tutorial that I spoke of earlier is something that will allow you to walk literally, where do I find the local, the local uh, youth correctional facility? Who do I contact there? What do I say when I get in touch with them? How do I engage my, my own chorus? Things of that nature. So um, we also have a, a flyer that's available to you. And, and uh, lastly, um, because I care so much about this, uh, I will be a resource to you as well. So pick up the phone, shoot me an email. Any way I can help you, I will help you walk through from the first contact to ultimately making this fly in your hometown. So that's what Power of Harmony is all about. Um, I am so proud to be a part of the Wink Foundation and know that, that uh, they are not only financially, but, but emotionally um, driving this. And, and for us to make this happen nationally, we're going to need a lot more money and a lot more people. So that's why we're here tonight and we appreciate your attention on this. And one, la one last thing is, you know, one of the critical pieces, as Dennis mentioned, is the mentorship. So if, if there's not an opportunity to do the full-blown Power of Harmony four pillars, the greater network we have for these young men, the more we can empower them to continue on the best track they can continue on and have that mental or male role model and stay in, in, with music. So, you know, there's, there's kind of adaptability to the program, too. Thank you. Bye, partner. <laughs> awesome thank you gentlemen i appreciate that and uh yeah this is a program with a lot of potential and for some of you watching who have been around and known about the harmony foundation for a long time in some ways i think this harkens back to the institute of logopedics days when when gifts the, the purpose of gifts of, for this program i would say while we would love for some of these young men to continue to sing at the barbershop harmony society in a chapter and have mentors in that way, the best, absolute best news that we could hear is that this program has changed the trajectory of their life, even if it's in a small way, to allow them to live happier and more fulfilled lives. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's critical and, and really, really special. So thank you for sharing that um, and for being with us tonight, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Thank you. Back to our hostess with the mostess, Rick Taylor. Thank you, Kyle. And I, I'd like to just once again extend a, a thank you to uh, Donna and Gay and Kelly from uh, Harmony Incorporated. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight and bringing all of those great updates. And also to Dennis and, and Phil from, uh, for Power of Harmony. Thank you so much for, uh, for being with us tonight. Okay, so uh, to tell you about our next presenters, I'd like to introduce to you a longtime friend uh, he's a, a judge, a coach, and a right fair lead singer. He's, uh, he was the lead of our 2008 quartet champions, OC Times, and he's currently the lead singer for the 2019 Silver Medalists Throwback. Please welcome Harmony Foundation Regional Director and Plan Giving Manager, Sean Devine. Sean? Oh, thank you, Rick. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Thanks for letting me follow that. <laughs> Um, Dennis and Philip, thank you so much. My heart is full tonight. And uh, uh, <clears throat> after these last seven months, I personally needed this tonight with all of you uh, to see so many friends. Um, 
I'm just thrilled. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight with us uh, to be part of uh, tonight's town hall. Whew, uh, it is an honor and it's a privilege to be part of this, um, our barbershop community, uh, from my AIC brothers uh, to our dear friends and Sweet Adelines and Harmony Incorporated. Again, uh, to Dennis and Philip and this truly life-changing Power of Harmony program, we thank you. Uh, to our donor family, uh, both past, present, and future donors. Uh, you are our family. You are my family. Uh, I'm missing you all so much. We miss you so much. We can't wait till we're uh, able to be together again. Uh, also tonight, I'm especially thankful uh, to have this opportunity to introduce uh, another very exciting gold medal partnership uh, and to introduce two dear friends that just happened to be two of my very favorite tenors. And I get to work alongside both of them here on this very special First You Dream campaign. And if you would please welcome from the Cornet Club, uh, board member and show chair, Kendra LaPointe, and the Cornet Club president, Nancy Clater. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thanks to everyone for this opportunity to share. And on behalf of the Cornette Club, we are so honored to be a part of this event tonight, our, our first time being a part of an event like this. Um, and we are so excited to partner with Harmony Foundation International to learn more about what all of you are doing in your partnerships. This has been so amazing just to hear all of your stories and what's going on with you. Um, it almost seems not a trite to talk about a show after what you just shared with the power of harmony. So thanks whoever created this lineup. <laughs> um, but I will go back to a little bit of some background for the Cornette Club for me personally that led to this partnership. I am a product of barbershop parents. I am a true barbershop brat. My parents found barbershop in college. They took a college class called Barbershop 101. They met in a junior college. They were in the male and female quartets and that's how they became friends. Eventually went on to compete in uh, competitive quartets in, in the, well, I won't give the years. That would be mean they're on the call. So I won't do that to you parents, um, but they've competed for many years. I grew up getting to hear their recordings and eventually had the opportunity to sing in a quartet myself and grew up singing in a family quartet. So I had that opportunity to learn and grow and sing in youth barbershop before it was a thing to do. For me, it was a family activity. So to be able to be part of the Cornette Club, to be able to be the show chair this last year, um, last year was my first year doing that, and then to have everything get canceled this year and like all of you be devastated and not know exactly how to move forward, the show team decided that our only way forward last spring was to do a Facebook Live show. Many of you may have done some similar things or considered that. Uh, a lot of our regions did Facebook Live events and they were great. And then we saw the AIC show and it was fantastic and it was high quality and they didn't have streaming issues and we decided we we couldn't do Facebook Live because we didn't want the guys to show us up. <laughs> so I called Debbie Cleveland because I knew she was a trustee and of course she's a sister queen. And I said, how did they do that? And she told me about the guidance and their, their new platform that the AIC had come up with. And then I talked to Chad and he told me how much it would cost. And after I regained my breath, I said, well, <laughs> I guess we're gonna need some help. And he suggested I call Sean and we'd been friends for years. Our quartets had done many shows together. So I called and I said, hypothetically, how would we do this? And that led to the conversation with the HFI staff, with Perry, and then with our board of uh, the Cornet Club coming on and all of us figuring out how this would work. The Cornet Club had never done anything outside of our own funds. We've always been able to earn enough money with our annual show to more or less pay for what we wanted to do. This year was a whole new ball game. 
And the best thing that's come out of it is that not only now are we able to fund our first ever virtual show, which is on October 24th, we'd love to have you tune in for that free virtual show. But now we also have found a path to pay for our endeavors for education. And for us, that's Queens College, which is a intimate weekend um, with Queen Quartets and Queens to teach and educate. And I'm gonna hand it over to Nancy, the president of the Coronet Club, to tell you more about what Queens College is all about and why we're so excited about this partnership with Harmony Foundation. Thank you, Kendra. I'm Nancy Clater, president for the Coronet Club. Um, Queens College is very similar to BHS's um, um, weekend thing that they do every year, the, mid, the midwinter. Um, basically, it's a whole weekend that starts on, on a Thursday night, and then we, we have some classes on Thursday night. We have classes on Friday, um, and then Friday night, and then Saturday. And that would be like our normal Queens College. But our next Queen College is going to be a completely new venture for us. We are collaborating with uh, Sweet Adelines International on this Queen's College, and it's going to be held in July of 2021. And we're praying that it's going to not be canceled. Um, and it's going to be totally different this year because what we're doing is we're going to be including our brand new Diamond Division contest, which is... Um, Anybody that wants to pull together a quartet that are 55 years of age and older and uh, compete. So that's going to be brand new for us uh, this year, um, I mean, in July of 21. And that's going to be held on Thursday night. And then on Friday, after our classes, we're going to also include a Rising Star contest. And Rising Star is our young singers, um, and I believe they have to be 21 or no, 25, 25 or less. Um, and so we're going to have their competition on Friday night. So now you've got Thursday night with our Diamond Division and our older singers. And then we've got Friday night with our younger singers. And then on Saturday, we do more classes. And then Saturday night, there's a show and we all sing for one another. And as Kendra mentioned, our education is, is built on classes and PVIs, private vocal instructions. And another new thing for us, for this Queens College, is going to be a young singers track, which Debbie Cleveland is going to be the faculty for. And so they're going to be, all of our young singers are going to be following Debbie throughout the weekend. They're going to be learning new songs. They're going to be performing new songs for us. Um, so this is a Queens College that's going to include I, probably the most audience we've ever had, the most number of people to come, the most number of people come and watch the contest, most people involved in the classes themselves and registering for Queens College because it's got all this stuff wrapped up into one. And it, it kind of goes along with our campaign of First You Dream, which is, which is the, the, the whole, the, the, I guess the title of our show, First You Dream, because you were talking about our young singers and their first dream about singing in front of an audience or being involved in being in a quartet. Um, and then you've got the Diamond Division. And these are people that have gone through that and they've been the young singers and maybe they've been Queens of Harmony and now they're doing the Diamond Division. So it kind of wraps the whole campaign of Dare to Dream um, in one big package with a bow wrapped around it. Um, the Queen's College is, is a huge undertaking for the Coronet Club financially. And because we weren't going to have a show this year because of uh, the pandemic, we thought, okay, so that's our only moneymaker. So how do we support Queen's College, which is really the, the charter of Coronet Club is just like Harmony Inc. It's, it's all about education and bringing our young women and our young singers up to speed about what we do. And the, the bottom line of our Queens College is always that the skills that they learn at Queens College provide them with confidence in themselves. It teaches them how to build rapport, not only with their audience, but with their friends. It gives them a, a sense of fellowship and fun that they maybe not, maybe not would have had an opportunity to have. And 
these benefits last a lifetime and it, it, it helps them build and build themselves and then it, it continues with further barbershop experiences and it's it's just the most tremendous value for these young people and it reminds me of what power of harmony is doing which is just phenomenal um for our, our young singers and it gives them a value that they can bring forward to anything they do in their lives and i'm a product of that i started in sweet island lines when i was 17 years old and i was so lucky to find it at 17. and back in those days when i was in college i was so nervous about speaking in front of people i had to take i took <laughs> I took a, a, a class in college in, in public speaking and I was like absolutely in a nervous wreck every time I got up in front of people and then I joined Sweet Eye Lines and it, it's totally changed my life. It's, it's made me a, a completely different person and this is what we're doing for our kids and this is what we're doing for our young singers. So I can't be any more happy that we found Harmony Foundation to help us with this from day one, Sean and Perry have been so supportive and, and so supportive of us, not only of Cornet Club, but of Sweet Annalines. And now we're all together as one. We've got Sweet Annalines working with Cornet Club and Cornet Club working with Harmony Foundation. And it's just, it's remarkable what we've been able to accomplish with, with Sean and Perry in the last three months. It's, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I am so proud to be a part of this town hall tonight. And I'm, I am so happy that Harmony Foundation is there. I would really like to know how far Harmony Foundation got started um, because we're brand new to this. Like who, who, who created this? Who, who came up with this idea? Because it's just phenomenal in so many different ways. And we really are making a difference in the world. I mean, power for Harmony. I mean, kudos to you, boy. I'll tell you that, that just hit me right here. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for inviting us. And uh, we hope to have more experiences and more campaigns with Harmony Foundation. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Nancy. <laughs> and thank you, Kendra. Uh, we're just, we're so thankful for you for this opportunity for this campaign uh, with the Cornet Club family. Uh, I start to think about that event, the Queens College, in the middle of that rising star life-changing program and the and the new diamond division um just promoting and celebrating this idea of this lifelong singing and uh we're just thrilled to join together to realize this dream that i know resonates with everyone here on this call thank you so much uh, for more information we hope that you'll uh, head to cornetclub.com uh, to find out more about the First You Dream campaign. Uh, I've been able to see some pieces of this amazing show that's coming up on Saturday night, October 24th. We hope that you will uh, register, that you'll grab a seat, that you'll tell your friends it's a free event. This will be the largest audience to ever celebrate with our champions uh, from the Cornet Club. It will inspire you. And AIC, we better watch out. We got to up our game already. So um, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, now back to uh, our favorite host, my dear friend. Thank you, Mr. Rick Taylor. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Sean. And uh, thanks too again for, uh, to Nancy and to Kendra. Thanks for being here. Uh, well, friends, now it uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce our next presenter. He's been a middle and high school vocal music educator, a college professor of music, and he's also a very passionate leader when it comes to supporting barbershop and singing. Friends, would you please welcome President and CEO of Harmony Foundation, Dr. Perry White. Thank you, Rick. And, and thank you all for joining us tonight, and, and a special thanks to all of our partners for being here as well. We're, we're, we're especially appreciative in this time of, of I think we're all experiencing some Zoom fatigue, so we truly appreciate you being here with us. You know, if, if you were here with us for the Foundation's Town Hall on June 25th, you'll remember that we indicated some of the initiatives that the Foundation intends to pursue in continued support and expansion of, of the barbershop experience. Obviously, as you've now heard, we've gained some significant clarity on those opportunities and the initiatives that are available through the effective collaboration with other organizations. We've been looking forward to sharing 
this with you and some of these exciting programs and the developing partnerships that these passionate and dedicated organizations intend to implement. Perhaps what we have is, is a developing association of barbershop organizations, each separate, each with separate donor bases, but with the potential to work together toward a shared goal to enrich lives through singing. Again, if you joined us for our June town hall, you heard me say that I have come to firmly believe that a sustainable future for the Barbershop Harmony Society rests in greater support and engagement at the local and regional level, that is the districts and chapters. After numerous conversations with district leadership, engaging their thoughts and ideas for programs of impact, I believe that to be true now more than I ever have. Since our June meeting, We've engaged district leaders in discussions around programs that could help districts and their chapters not only survive the challenges brought on by the pandemic, but to flourish on the other side. We know that singing programs will come back and the foundation wants to be prepared with resources to make those programs, both old and new, more robust. To that end, we call our donors efforts and their generosity faith giving because we have to believe in and we have to provide for the future of singing when we can all get back together to create harmony again. As our conversations have progressed, we found that each district has unique possibilities for impactful programming, but that district leaders all over the country have similar concerns and interest in the kinds of programs that need significant support right now. All seem to feel the need for continued support for future youth engagement, not only at the national level, but more at the local and regional levels as well. They all seem to feel that a sustainable future for barbershop singing requires expanded support for singing education and leadership development programs at the district and chapter levels. The director's first program of, of Harmony Inc. might be a good example of that kind of focus. However, the most often discussed area of concern and need is for increased resources that can offer direct support for the chapters within their districts. Many of our leaders are fearful that the lack of chapter activities due to COVID and quarantine will lead to membership attrition. A good deal of our conversation is actually focused on ways to build a retention and recruitment program that works. The district leaders are focused on such an initiative as well as other ideas that can help sustain our chapters. There's much more to come on this topic as we tease out these strategies with each group of district leaders in the weeks to come. Additionally, district leaders have mentioned a desire for continued support for BHS national programming through the foundation. And I can absolutely assure you that HFI will continue annual support for those outstanding BHS programs. One of the primary components of our fundraising activities is to assign a team of dedicated fundraisers to serve each of the U.S. districts. The HFI representative's role is not only to solicit funding from donors, but to share information back and forth to serve as a conduit of communication between the donors or their members, the district leadership, and the foundation to close that circle of communication necessary to help the donor fulfill their wishes, share the leadership's perceptions, thoughts, and visions with them, and to help the leadership better understand what their members value and what donors wish to support. With this in mind, as I've said, we've assigned teams of our fundraisers to serve each district. And I'd like to take a few moments to let each of them introduce themselves to you and let you know which districts they'll be serving going forward. I can pass it to Jim. Uh, yes, Jim Clark here once more. I've been with the foundation for just over seven and a half years. I'm the Western Regional Director of Development, uh, which means that my territory is the Western 2.967 million square miles <laughs> of the United States. So not very big. Um, that includes, uh, we barber shoppers would think of that as the Southwestern, the Far Western, the Evergreen, and the Rocky Mountain districts, as well as the state of Nebraska, which has a little chunk of the Central States district in there. My name is Kyle Snook. I've been with the Harmony Foundation for over six years. 
and uh, the central region of the United States, and I get the privilege of working with the Land O'Lakes District, Central States District, Dixie District, and the Sunshine District. I'm Sean Devine here in my home office, uh, in my hometown of Hershey, Pennsylvania. I'm in my 12th year on the Harmony Foundation staff. Uh, I'm currently both the plan giving manager, coordinating our legacy of Harmony program, and also serving as regional director. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to work alongside uh, all of our uh, folks in the Illinois District, the Northeastern District, the Seneca Land District, the Pioneer District, and right here in my home district of the Mid Atlantic District. I'm Rick Taylor. I have been with the foundation for four years and uh, thrilled to, uh, to be able to serve uh, the folks in uh, the shared district here, Mid-Atlantic, Carolina's district, Johnny Appleseed, and uh, the Cardinal district. I'm JJ Hawkins. I've been with the Harmony Foundation now for six years. And I am in the Donor Care Center as a Donor Care Center Associate. Uh, my districts are the Cardinal District, Central States District, the Far Western District, Southwestern District, and Rocky Mountain District. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Brian Nelson. Uh, I've been here at uh, the Harmony Foundation now for about three years. And I'm gonna be working with uh, Evergreen, Land O'Lakes, Illinois, Pioneer, and Seneca Land. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Hopper, and I'm I'm uh, also a member of the Donor Care Center, uh, working as a Donor Care Center associate. I've been with the Harmony Foundation for almost two years. It'll be two years next month, and I'll be working with the Carolinas District, the Sunshine District, the Northeastern District, the Dixie District, and my home, the Johnny Appleseed District. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I appreciate that. As you can see, this is a, a seasoned and dedicated team of fundraisers, and, and I can speak for all of them when I say that, that we're excited by the energy we're feeling in response from the district leaders as we, be, as we begin this next evolutionary phase of work at the foundation. You can, you'll also notice that our, there are two fundraisers assigned to each district. They're not always the same two, but, uh, but each district is, is fortified with two fundraisers. And as a team, I think we're all looking forward to the future and the impact our donors will have at the local and regional level. And while I'm talking about our BHS districts and chapters, we want you to be aware that the fall distribution of donors choice checks have all gone out, that the checks in this mailing reflect donations that were, were received by the foundation from January 1st to June 30th of this year. And they're going to provide over $330,000 back to our districts and chapters. So given the fact that, that most revenue producing activities have been canceled or postponed in 2020, we know that our district and chapter leaders truly appreciate our donors' willingness to step forward with these gifts. So I just wanna take this opportunity to, to directly say to our HFI donors, thank you. Your gifts mean more now than they ever have. So we truly appreciate that. And, and lastly, beyond that, there's one additional item I wanted to mention this evening, and that's the foundation's blossoming relationship with a group some of you may know as SPPBSQSUS, or the Society for the Preservation and Propagation of Barbershop Quartet Singing in the United States, an organization that's grown by more than 50% since the spring of this year. While only in the beginning stages, we're excited about the passion this organization has for barbershop and some of the ideas they've presented to further barbershop outreach well beyond our current community in an attempt to not only preserve the art form, but to impact multiples, multitudes of lives in significant ways. We've more research to do, but we look forward to coming alongside of this organization and hope to have more information to share about their philanthropic direction with you very soon. Having said that, let me turn things back to Rick Taylor. 
Thank you, Perry. Um, well, I think we've uh, we've heard from everyone, and uh, so we're we're going to uh, go to the questions. And uh, uh, forgive me for having to read them here, but that's the only way we'll get them. So uh, I, this first one is for uh, Tim Browersma, uh, and uh, Tim, uh, the question is: Is it more feasible for the AIC Quartet on Chapter Show? to be better leveraged by having a pool of chapters in the same area do a joint show so one AIC quartet could reach more of the public? I would say yes. I mean, I, if, if it's about bringing people together for community, that's a no-brainer. Again, I go to the Evergreen example, you know, two different divisional competitions happening together and multiple chapters partnering on the use of these AIC and Sweet Adeline Champ Quartets to go to as many schools in that region as possible. You know, so instead of us having one quartet in Seattle, you know, we'll have two or three, four quartets spread out over several hundred miles hitting more schools engaged with more chapters. That's exactly what we're looking for. So yes. Awesome, thank you, Tim. Um, Here's one. Uh, this is for Tim also. Tim, you're a busy boy tonight. Uh, for the district and regional clinics, will the AIC and uh, Sweet Adeline Quartets go to schools on Friday and then on Saturday have the kids come together for a clinic and then have a show Saturday night with all? Yes, that's exactly the approach. Um, there's, there's even talk, depending on um, the, court, the AIC Quartets, have committed that depending on the need and how many schools are willing to engage in that area um, to even fly in on like a Thursday morning early so that they could spend even Thursday afternoon and all day Friday hitting as many as possible. So absolutely. And then Saturday culminating in, a, in a, an event where the youth are invited. The, the one we're talking about in Southern California is with SoCal Vocal Association, Far West District, multiple local chapters, and that will be a Thursday and a Friday, culminating in an event on Saturday and a show Saturday night where all those kids are involved. So, yep. Sounds great. Thank you, Tim. So here's, uh, here's the next one. Uh, this is for Dennis. Uh, Dennis, does the Wank Foundation only work with young men? Are girls served by them as well? Well, the, the uh, ironically in Ohio, there there are no uh, youth female prisons, um, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because of, of the risk that it poses. Um, first of all, there there are fewer female uh, youth incarcerated. They are in the adult prison system, um, and we've been focusing specifically because of my connections um, and experience on the DYS in Ohio which are the, the young men uh, in the Ohio facility. So certainly if there are opportunities outside Ohio where there are uh, youth female uh, prisons that, uh, that we can serve, we'll, we'll include them in Power of Harmony, uh, absolutely. And honestly, you know, there's, there's potentials in, in areas outside the incarcerated uh, populations, but um, it's a good starting point for us. I think it's important for us to work the kinks out of it um, in, in the, the male system as well. Um, one other point I want to make while I have the floor, Rick, is, is that, you know, we're all looking for ways to stay engaged using the technology we have right now. And, and this past week, spoke to the people at Cuyahoga Hills, which is the, the correctional facility that I'm most familiar with. And they said, you know, we, the, the boys want to do something. What can we do? And, and uh, we've decided to go ahead and, and Zoom with them. But we're going to start with, with some simple rhythm things. We're gonna go through some clap uh, rhythm things with them initially. And we have a, um, there's a group called Writers in Residence, which is allowing the young men in the facility to write, express themselves through writing. And we have some of the pieces that were written by those young men recently. And we have a group that is, um, that is arranging those specifically for percussion. Um, and we're gonna start with those as an introduction. So. We've got to open the doors. We have to get them excited and interested, and we have to do more performing before we can ultimately get in there and work with them. So, um, just want to be—I realized I hadn't shared that earlier. I want you to know that you know we're working on that because we can't just can't sit idle. Uh, those kids want us and need us, and we want to be there. So, thanks. that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, waiting to see if we have uh, uh, another question or two. 
in the meantime, Rick, can I interrupt? Absolutely. I, I'd like to, I'd like to ha bring on, if I can get my video to start again, can I bring on a surprise guest or two? By all means. Well, hold, hold right there, folks. Take a seat, mystery guest. Hey, come on around. My thing that goes here. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's. You know who you're looking at? We heard this was a formal occasion, so we got dressed up. <laughs> Long time no see. Hey, everybody. We're uh, just jumping up here real quick. We are uh, downstairs. There's lots of lights, cameras, actors, Christmas trees. So my wife is very happy. She asked me if she could go home and decorate for Christmas now. She has a problem. Anyway, it's, uh, we are, uh, we're thrilled to be here. We're working on the Spirit of the Season uh, production. And it's gonna be really wonderful and delightful. And it's really great. Uh, sorry that we missed the town hall, but we did want to uh, jump on and say how excited we are about all the organizations. Excuse me, I'm fat and I had to walk up steps. Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me? But uh, it's great to see. Uh, you know, we're really just interested in advancing the cause of barbershop with uh, uh, Sweet Adeline's, Harmony Incorporated, uh, the Cornet Club Show, all the things. We're just really thrilled for all of the uh, initiatives and programs that we're doing because really all that we care about, whether it's a show that we're doing, which we believe has the potential to reach millions of people, or if it's going to underserved schools or whatever it is, we're just very interested in all spreading the love of barbershop around the world with Harmony Foundation. So very excited about that. Mike, take the mask off. I'll put mine on. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. You clear? Great. Just want to say how excited we are to have so many of our past champs coming on to uh, be a part of this show. We have, I think it's 18 quartets. Even one of them is no longer with us, and they're going to make a surprise appearance. That quartet that's no longer with us is called Main Street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, the, the, we're going to share that? It's supposed to be a oh, surprise. Sorry. No, we actually got some wonderful footage of the Buffalo Bills who are going to make an appearance. They were in a show back in 1962 called the Bell Telephone Hour. We were able to grab some old footage of them doing some Christmas songs on NBC. So you can guess who maybe helped us with that footage. <laughs> someone uh, up in the NBC area. And um, we are uh, in week two of principal photography. We were out in Dallas last week and had a ball with Mr. Dan Bell there. Thank you, Dan, for letting us use your home. And uh, so we have, I think, five quartets here this weekend with us in Nashville. And then we'll do the rest next week in Orlando. And Sean's up there. He, hey, Sean, we're looking forward to seeing OC Times. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And this is gonna be a show no one's uh, ever seen before. No one's ever seen Barbershop in this light in terms of, of uh, production values. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we just wanted to jump in and say hi. We love everybody, love all the, we love Barbershop. So that's all we care about is Barbershop. So let's just go do more Barbershop because who cares about all the rest of it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've probably said too much. Love everybody, we gotta go back to work. See ya. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. Of course that was, Chad Guyton from uh, Four Voices and Mike McGee from Main Street, um, and uh, I'm I'm hoping they're not wrecking Perry's home. Um, Wait till you see it. Wait till oh you boy. see it. It's a disaster here, folks. <laughs> My well, watch too. Got, I got key grips and gaffers all over the place, and I don't even know what they are. <laughs> Mine was oh, too, Perry. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. We've actually got a couple of other questions here, if we if we could. Uh, got one for Kyle. Um, Kyle, where can Barbershop Harmony Society chapters find information about the power of harmony and how to start the program locally? I think Dennis is going to be your best resource there. He has walked the walk and has a has put together a a template, so to speak, of his experiences and some tips that he has gathered from this process. So um, certainly you can contact me and I can get you in touch with Dennis or Dennis, if you have a way of distributing your information, that would be great. But Dennis will be the man with the plan. Happy to do it. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's one for Perry. Um, I sense a shift from our longtime independent uh, somebody's tapping, uh, typing with uh, 
with uh, 11 fingers, I think. Just a moment here. Let's see. I sense a, <laughs> I sense a shift from our longtime independence as barbershop organizations to desire to work as partners to spread the gospel of barbershop harmony. Does Perry sense a real willingness of all of us to really begin working together? Well, I think, I think what we all know on this call is that, that regardless of what the endeavor is, we're, all of us is smarter than one of us. And there's much more strength in what we do when we do it collaboratively. And so I think that's, that has really been kind of the driving force behind what we're trying to do here with the Harmony Foundation is to, to work in collaboration. So I, I think, yes, that's, that's my sense in the short answer. Thank you, Perry. Waiting to see if anything else will uh, will appear here. The uh, sometimes it takes them a few minutes to uh, to get the uh, the the questions up. Perry, do you have any other special guests that at your house? Uh, uh, oh, here is here is one just came through here. Um, how does Harmony Foundation determine which group receives what amount of funds? Is it by request? We're actually funding, we're working within the donor bases of each of those groups. So each group has provided for us uh, a, a, a donor base that we can solicit for them and for their projects. And, and a lot of our work uh, for some of these entities as well has been to take a lot of the, um, uh, many of their disparate lists of prospects uh, and put them together within the database and build a database of donors for those individual groups. So that's been a, a kind of another element to the work we've been doing. Um, in many cases, taking, taking organizations that really haven't had a history of philanthropy and helping them put the quote unquote foundation underneath it so that, so that we can start to, to build that database and build a solicitable group of people to go to who have a specific interest in those organizations. Wonderful. Um, here's a, another question, a question for Sean. Uh, delighted to hear about the Harmony Foundation supporting the Coronet Club. Great synergy. If we want to support their show, is it best to donate directly to the Coronet Club or through Harmony Foundation? I would actually be honored to uh, toss this over to Kendra LaPointe. Kendra, would you mind answering this? I'd be happy to answer that, Sean. So um, we just recently had an entire Coronet Club Zoom meeting. It was the first time we'd seen each other as a group since last fall. We, we would be going to our convention um, coming up this next week. And so when we were on that call, it was to share with the Coronet Club for the first time the real behind the scenes of how the partnership came to be with the Cornette Club and Harmony Foundation. And we found out from many of them that they are so uh, secluded during this time that they felt totally disconnected to each other, to the Queens, to their friends and family. And it wasn't until we had that Zoom and we all saw each other's faces and we listened to the beginning of our virtual song, which will be the finale of our show. And we got to hear like the tag, we shared it. And they cried because they'd only heard their own voice in their living room. And to hear all our voices together for the first time was just, it was magical. And so one of the questions they had was, why wouldn't we just send a check directly to the treasurer of the Cornette Club, Deb Peters, and let her deposit it? And so we were telling them that the partnership with HFI gives us not only this amazing database that Perry just referenced, because we had papers, like physical papers of people that had bought tickets to our show in the past, we actually sent those to Dixie and she manually entered them and we have this great database now. We never knew that was an option for us. We just kind of did it the way we always did it because it worked good enough. So we, we asked them to please send the donations to um, our combined Cornette Club and Harmony Foundation page, which is called First You Dream, because not only are we funding our show, we're funding Queens College and our hope is to be funding Queens College every year and hopefully in multiple locations, which we haven't been able to do in recent years because things just keep costing more to produce our show. So this gives us a whole nother way to do it. So please 
uh, donate through Harmony Foundation to the barbershop um, campaign that you want to support because we're all barbershoppers like we were all talking about we want to support all barbershop we all want to sing together and see each other as soon as possible but if you want to make sure you're supporting your your campaign just support that campaign through harmony foundation it benefits everyone thank you kendra tell your mom and dad i said hey they're on say hey <laughs> Awesome. Well, friends, I've, I've got just a couple of things. That's a, a, I'm told that's all the questions that we have uh, time for right now. So I've got just a couple of things that I'd like to just uh, ask. If barbershop singing has made a positive impact in your life, if barbershop singing has made a positive impact in your family's lives, if you believe your local community is a better place because of barbershop singing. If you would love more people of all ages to experience the joy of barbershop singing, then you believe in the mission of Harmony Foundation. Friends, what we know Am I back? Sorry. Friends, what we know is uh, is when we all, what we know is that when we, we're all much better and we can have greater impact when we all work together toward a common goal. The Harmony Foundation is excited about a future that allows donor dollars to be compounded through collaboration and impact at the local, regional, and national levels. Thank you again so much for sharing time with us this evening and for joining us uh, on this joyful call. Uh, we certainly appreciate you and your interest in Harmony Foundation and also our growing list of partners. Good night. Be safe. Take care. <laughs>